Hello and welcome to today's lesson on circuit symbols which is part of the GCSE combined science topic electricity. So in today's lesson we're going to understand how to draw electrical circuit symbols. Uh, so if we're being successful and learned in today's lesson we should be able to understand the basic definitions of electrical quantities. We should be able to detail the circuit symbols of electrical devices and finally understand how to draw electrical circuit diagrams which falls in the following part of the GCSE combined science specification standard circuit symbols which is in the electricity topic of the physics section. So we've got two particular objects which can produce a potential difference for a circuit. You've got cells and you've got batteries. Now a cell is one device which produces a potential difference for a circuit, whilst a battery is a plural of a cell. Now many devices use more than one cell to produce the potential difference to make a device work. Now in a battery, the potential difference of each cell is added to find the potential difference of a battery. So a cell is a device which creates a potential difference when this is placed in a complete circuit, a current will flow. Now a battery is two or more cells put together in an electrical circuit. Now electrons can be made to move in an electrical circuit with a kinetic energy when attached to a source such as a battery or a cell or a power pack which provides a potential difference. Now this allows the electrical energy to be used in different electrical devices. So electrical devices are devices found in electrical circuits which will convert electrical energy into other energy stores. So the energy starts in an electrical circuit as the chemical energy store of a battery or a cell. The battery puts energy into the electrical circuit. Work is then done in the electrical circuit via electrical current. Now remember work is always done when charge is moved. Then the energy is then outputted as a store of the output of the circuit. So in this case the output of the circuit is a light bulb. Now remember in all these examples in all these electrical circuits energy energy cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed. This means the energy supplied by the battery or the cell equals the energy outputted by the outputs, which is an important idea. So we call this a closed system. However, in reality, in actuality, the electrical circuit is an open system because some of the energy is dissipated to the surroundings through the wires. The circuit gets hot. So in reality, the energy supplied by the battery will equal the energy lost through the wires plus the energy outputted from the output. Now eventually all of the energy supplied by the battery or cell will be dissipated into the internal energy of the surroundings. Now devices which transfer electrical energy into other energy stores include resistors, light bulbs. Now sometimes older light bulbs can be called filament bulbs. Uh, rheostats. Now rheostats are examples of variable resistors and fuses. Now how do we display these components in physics? Well we represent these electrical devices with electrical symbols so that they can be understood all over the world when they're drawn in diagrams irrespective of their na native language of the people drawing the diagrams. So circuit symbols are constant over the entire world. And in addition, we use electrical symbols as they're easier to draw in an electrical circuit and less open to interpretation. So circuit symbols are easier to understand and quicker to draw. So let's have a look at a few electrical circuit symbols. The first one is a cell which supplies the electrical energy to the circuit and the larger terminal on the left is the positive one, a battery that supplies electrical energy to the circuit and is made from more than one cell. And like the cell, the larger terminal is the positive terminal. This one is a lamp or a bulb. That's a device which converts the energy store of the circuit into light. This one is a switch. This device allows current to flow only when it's in a closed or on position because you'll get a complete circuit. This one is a resistor. This device restricts the flow of current, for example, to limit the current passing through a device such as a LED. This particular symbol shows a variable resistor or rheostat. Now this is the device with two contacts which is usually used in a circuit to control the current. So examples of a variable resistor in the real world include adjusting the lamp brightness, adjusting the motor speed and adjusting the rate of flow of charge into a capacitor in a timing circuit. This particular diagram shows us a fuse. Now a fuse is a device which melts if the current in the device becomes dangerously high. 
This particular circuit symbol shows us a diode, a device which only allows current to flow in one direction around the circuit. This particular device is a voltmeter. This device is used to measure potential difference in an electrical circuit and it must be placed in parallel. This particular symbol is showing us an ammeter. This device is used to measure current in an electrical circuit and has got to be placed in series. The next symbol here shows us a light dependent resistor or LDR. This is a device which converts brightness or light intensity to resistance, an electrical property. This particular symbol shows us a loudspeaker. This is a device which converts the energy stored from the electrical circuit into sound. This particular symbol here shows us a thermistor, a device which converts temperature or heat to resistance. Now, we need to be able to draw correct circuit diagrams when carrying out experiments on electricity. Now, we use circuit diagrams as this allows electricians and engineers from all around the world to understand the electronics of a device even if they don't understand the language of the country it was produced in. Now, this is important as you can then assess the dangers of the circuit and any potential requirements the circuit may have. So, a circuit diagram shows you how the components in a circuit are connected together. So here are some examples of circuit diagrams. So the circuit diagram allows you to determine firstly what's in the actual electrical circuit, what components there are, and the layout of these components. So in this is another example of an electrical circuit. You'll see all the different circuit symbols of the different components all arranged in their order. This is another example of a circuit diagram. So again, you can see the, cir the circuit diagram with the different symbols in. Now a circuit diagram will allow you to determine the values of current and potential difference for each component in an electrical circuit. And here is another example of a circuit diagram. Now here is a drawn example of a simple series circuit diagram. Now a series circuit is a circuit with one big loop. Now in a series circuit the current is constant in the loop, but in this series circuit the potential difference splits over the outputs. Now here is an example of a simple parallel circuit. You'll notice in our diagram the voltmeter is found parallel to the bulb. So in this particular idea, a parallel circuit is a circuit with more than one loop. So in a parallel circuit, the potential difference is the same in each path, but in a series circuit, sorry, in the parallel circuit, the current will split across each path. So from looking at the previous examples, we know some certain rules for drawing circuit diagrams. You always use a pencil and a ruler. You draw these diagrams clearly and make them big. You always ensure the circuits are completed because a circuit will only work if it has a comp if it's complete, if it's an entire loop. You ensure the wires are drawn as straight lines and the current will always flow from the larger line of the battery or cell around the circuit to the smaller line. So here's an example of how to draw a circuit diagram. Now the conventional current starts at the larger line of the cell, the positive terminal, and then goes to the smaller line, the negative terminal. So always remember that current flows from the positive terminal of the battery or the cell to the negative one and we call that idea conventional current. Now also notice that our lines are drawn with a pencil, they're straight lines and our lines are complete. We've got a complete circuit there. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? We know that circuit diagrams use certain standard symbols and you should be able to draw circuit diagrams and interpret them and we should know the particular symbols for switches, cells, batteries, diodes, resistors, variable resistors, LEDs, lamps, fuses, voltmeters, ammeters, thermistors and LDRs. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson where if we've been successful and we've learned we can understand the basic definitions of electrical quantities. We can detail the circuit symbols of electrical devices and finally we understand how to draw electrical circuit diagrams. So that's today's lesson on circuit symbols which is part of the electricity topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson and have a lovely day.